Hey everyone, welcome to Bardom. First time to this channel, check out this introduction video for my channel. Um, this is the story of Christmas, and uh, well, I'll just get right into it. Like uh, if you like it, share if you want to share this with your friends, and uh, comment if you if there's anything that I can improve upon in this video, if there are any questions that you have, or if there are other versions of the story that you've heard. Once, uh, around 2,000 years ago, there was a young lady sitting uh, by herself when suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared. Okay, please don't freak out. Freak out. Listen, uh, uh, I'm an angel of the Lord, Angel Gabriel, here, and, and I have a mission from you, uh, and a message from you, for you from God. Now God now thinks God very favorably of you, he finds you a very virtuous woman, and he wants you to become the mother of his, of his son. Uh, he's going to be sending out a, a savior along, and he wants you to be his mother. His mother. Uh, uh, if you choose to accept this mission, you will have a child within the next nine months, and you shall name him Jesus. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're gonna go through a couple struggles, uh, especially throughout the next year or two. It's, uh, it's gonna be a little bit difficult, but uh, God really believes that you can handle this, and this is all with your permission, of course. So, would you accept the special to be the mother of God? Now, at this time, um, there was a king uh, already. There was uh, King Herod. From what I can tell, he was paranoid to say the least. He was the kind where if he heard, caught wind of anything where someone was saying bad about, something bad about him, like they were going to overthrow him, he would he would cut their throat before they got to him at uh, in the like, he would just cut their throat. Wouldn't even pause to think about it, he even murdered some of his own family. Having the Son of the God sent down is pretty big. People are going to hear about that. Um, and of course, people did, later on. Um, but that was something that could scare Herod easily. Because that means that he wasn't doing his job, people weren't happy with him, and he could lose all um, his land and everything. So. That, that is one uh, area where the danger for Mary in giving birth to God's son came from. But then there was the, uh, then there was the concern about her family. If, by Mary saying yes, she would have to explain that she got pregnant with the Holy Spirit and she didn't, she was still a virgin when she got married. Because that, that's what they wanted. That's what Joseph wanted. Uh, Joseph, her, the, the guy who she was betrothed to, wanted. Um, it was just proper. And, you know, even even the white dresses today are still supposed to mean that it's a, that you're, you're a virgin and you get married. Um, <clears throat> so, she would have to explain how she was pregnant and she was still a virgin. And it was just, it would be a huge mess. She could get cast out of her community, and I think I've even heard some stories in which case, in where she could have even been stoned to death for this. So, she was going to take a big risk. How am I going to get pregnant with the child of the Holy Spirit? I've never even kissed anyone. I mean, I'm, I mean, just, I'm just the messenger, messenger so, I so I don't know, know everything. everything. But, but I know, I know that, that it has to do, has with, to the do with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. That, will that will descend upon you. And you. But I swear, all, with all God, all things are prosperous. By the way, By the way did, did you know that your cousin, cousin Elizabeth, Elizabeth is pregnant? pregnant? You should totally you should go, totally visit, go her. visit her. Um, um, congrats to her, by the way. So yeah, do you still want to be the mother of the Son of God? I am a servant of God. If he really wants me to be the mother of the Son of God, then, 100%. I'll do it. And then the angel leaves her. And she's standing there all alone. Starting to realize what it is that she's just done. So, before anyone knows that she's pregnant and before she starts showing, 
she decides to take a little trip. She has family um, over in, a, in another region, um, and she decides to go and visit them. She decides to go and visit uh, Elizabeth and Zechariah. It, it, it kind of seems as though she just needs a little bit more um, reinforcement as to what it is that she's just done and that God will take care of everything and that the angel was really telling the truth. Um, she's a smart girl and not asking uh, how can I not doing the same thing that Zechariah did. Because Zachariah asked for uh, for proof that an angel was telling the truth. It wasn't good for him. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, she goes on, on that little trip, and when she comes back, she's starting to show. Uh, it's definitely, she, she's, she's probably getting into the second tri trimester, and when she comes back, there is some concern about what it ha was that happened um, over her not-so-spring break. She's betrothed to a man named Joseph. Um, he He's a carpenter. Uh, he's a little bit older than her, but uh, she's betrothed to him. And, well, um, she's, she's supposed to be a virgin, but, you know, virgins don't get pregnant. <laughs> They just don't. So now with this and with the confirmation that she is actually pregnant, he has to seriously think about what it is that he wants to do now. Because that's kind of grounds her in like calling off the whole thing. And Joseph is calling the shots here and he's really important uh, to deciding Mary's fate. But it turns out that angels can be incredibly useful and you know what, at least at least Joseph trusts in what they say. Uh, so Gabriel is probably getting very tired at this point of flying back and forth from between heaven and earth, but the angel Gabriel visits uh, Joseph. So Joseph ultimately decides to take Mary in as a wife. Hooray! Weddings! I love weddings! Now, around the time that Jesus was born, Israel um, was closely tied with the Roman Empire. The, the head honcho at the time was uh, Emperor Augustus. And Emperor Augustus decides that it's time for a census, because he wants to see who's living in his land. So the way that he does it is every uh, head of household is to take their family um, to the, the birthplace of the, um, the head of household. So Joseph now has to take his, his pregnant wife on a donkey, and they have to go about 90 miles away. It's rocky terrain, and Mary has to ride a donkey. She's heavily pregnant, soon to give birth, <laughs> and then this happens. This is just great. Traveling <laughs> must have been great. Uh, now, I, I know that I promised that I wouldn't give a history or a pseudo-history, but I just want to point out um, there's evidence to suggest that most people uh, back in, in biblical times took about, averaged about 20 miles per day. So, reasonably, if everything had been going fine, uh, it, it should have been, the, the trip should have taken about maybe five to seven days. Um, with Mary being pregnant, it probably may have taken like, oh, 10, maybe 14 days. Uh, so that's a lot of hard travel. I really wish that I had some record of what it was that Mary and Joseph did all the way to Bethlehem. I mean, I know that they probably would have stopped sometimes in towns and tried to sleep in a in a warm bed where they were best they could and in a in shelter wherever they could. But um, other than that, I, I really wish that I had some like record of Joseph uh, doing something super swashbuckling and like romantic and saving Mary from danger. But uh, I'm just going to leave all of that up to the imagination. I really think it would be cool if someone could come up with that. But um, yeah, I don't have any record of what it was that they did along the way. So uh, just imagine though, adventure, swashbuckling action, and a donkey doing something cool. But no matter what tr tr struggles the couple faced, I do know that they got to Bethlehem safely. But it was a very crowded Bethlehem. <laughs> See, everyone was there for the census, 
Um, they were there for the same purpose, so hospitality was kind of tight. They went all over to every inn that they possibly could. I'm trying to remember why it was that um, that Joseph could, didn't have uh, didn't have a place to stay with family, but traditionally the story goes that um, because there was no room at the inn, they actually had to go to a cave out behind the inn, which was used uh, for uh, donkeys and a couple sheep maybe. Um, it it was a warm place, although probably not the most hygienic. Especially not to have a, uh, a old lady give birth, um, but that is traditionally where Mary gave birth to Jesus, in a in a cave with animals. Right when Jesus was born, right above this the uh, the um, this <laughs> the cave that uh, he was born in, there was uh, there was a great star that is supposedly there was a great star that appeared in the sky, and for the uh, it was a way to, to mark the <laughs> X marks a spot literally um, for a number for the wise men who would be coming around 13 days later and the shepherds who would be um, <laughs> called to that spot later that night. Yep, the angels make an appearance again, and this time they terrify the, the poor living daylights out of out of uh, shepherds who are trying to keep watch over their sheep. One sheep. Two sheep, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> shepherds, 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 get up from your stupid, stupid sheep, sheep watching duties, watching duties and, go and go over to Bethlehem. Bethlehem. The baby has been born. He said, lying in a man in a stable. And, and he's the savior of the world. world. You should you totally, totally go, go see, see him. him. I'm going I'm to go going bear to witness, witness with, with all my friends, friends here to the whole to world. world. Anyone doing anything especially special after this? Maybe we should take up the uh, go see what the angels are talking about and go to that star. Hang on a second. I know that I'm a new shepherd at all here, but we were just visited by angels, told to go see the Savior of the Lord in cute, approachable baby form, and you guys are taking this like going to a drink at the pub after work. Oh, good. So I wasn't the only one who saw that. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm not doing anything after after this. Get I get off of work. Um, yeah. Let us go to Bethlehem. And so the shepherds go to Bethlehem. They follow the star as was prescribed by the angels, and, you know, they got to relieve some of the stress of being a shepherd uh, by playing with a really cute baby, who also happened to be holy, so, you know, there's that added bonus. Um, and I want to leave it, essentially, on this note. The scene in which, uh, in which Mary has given birth and the shepherds are there, and uh, Joseph is probably just chilling, taking care of Mary, and getting used to to the new baby. It's not. It's all. It's a. It's a silent night. It's a holy night. All is calm and all is right. And that is how I wish 2018 to go. I hope everyone uh, stays safe out there and happy holidays. So. Um, Oh wait, I will be back next uh, next week though. I still have a little bit more of the story to tell. You see, um, the bright shiny star in the sky, it it got some, it got attention from a lot of people and a lot of important people. So these uh, three foreign kings are going to be coming uh, to Bethlehem. They're going to take some time to travel, uh, but I do want to get to that story because, according to Matthew, um, the Gospel of Matthew, I mean. They they start some stuff with King Herod, and um, I just kind of want to remember that part of of uh, the nativity story. It's not the prettiest part of the nativity story, but it, I still want to include it. So um, yeah, as I said, stay safe out there, and uh, let's have an awesome 2017 and 2018. Woo!